Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Mega Man X3. Now we're ready to start off with Gravity Beetle. Now this is the one. This is my favorite track in the whole game. This is the one that I always think of uh, whenever I think of this game. And you have to remember that, since I didn't own this, I couldn't hear it whenever I wanted to, unlike all the other ones. So it was a real treat when I got to, when I was borrowing it or renting it, which was not often. But then I had an idea. A while back before this, I had discovered that because I had my VCR hooked up to my TV, actually real quick, I'm just going to give Zero a quick 10 second cameo just because I can. Um, with the VCR hooked up to the TV at the same time, I could actually record the channel that I was playing on and record some gameplay. So, and this was before YouTube and like the internet and all that shit. So, by having that, I could, uh, I went into every stage and just sat there for a couple minutes so that I would have the music recorded and I could play it back whenever I wanted to. And believe me, I did. Because there were some of my some of the tracks in here that I just, I really wanted to hear all the time, so I had the tape and I could listen to it whenever I wanted. Um, maybe it's kind of silly now when you think about it, but hey, I thought it was pretty cool at the time. I mean, I thought it was really cool when I discovered that I could even do that. Um, but yeah, I don't know where those tapes are now, though. I have them somewhere, but anyways. Coming up here, air dash up. You grab this F, it's another of the, the mechs. This one's the frog, I believe. And as you can go by the name, you can hit. Uh, it's used underwater. There's two segments of the game where I'm going to get hit. Oh, maybe not. Two segments of the game where you go underwater so that it can be used. Um, you can use it on land, but it's, it's really pointless too. It's like trying to use the uh, frog suit of Mario when you're not in water. It, it's just more so for a challenge, I guess, rather than having a practical use. But um, we'll get to that when we get there. I'm just, I'm just all over the place right now. Whatever. Down here, we should have the elevator. Again, switch to the Ray Splasher. I know I briefly mentioned it uh, earlier. I'll show off like all the weapons in their entirety later. Both their regular use and uh, their charge-up versions. I'll do that when I'm fighting them, when I'm fighting the bosses a second time. That's when I'll actually use the weapons, so you'll get to see them then. Besides any ones that I use in the meantime. There's like three that I mostly use. Uh, throughout the course of the, uh, the regular part of the game. Anyways, moving on. Up top here, we're actually going to have one of the generators, which we can actually use now, so when you hop onto it, it'll automatically move you there, and you get to choose between the ones you have. So I'm just going to choose the, uh, I don't know why it has N. I don't know, N for normal? Is this the, it's the Chimera? Chimera? I believe I'm getting the name right. If, if I'm not, who the hell cares? It's, it's the regular one. It's the basic one. That's the only thing you really need to know. I know the names of the other ones, but, uh... I guess I think I do. Whatever. If I fuck up the names, oh well. Then, I don't really need it for what I'm gonna do. Here, we're just gonna pound, pound it, pound it. And then here, you need it to break this wall. I'm pretty sure the, the drills don't do it. Then you also have to get across that spike pit. You have, you have to, uh, use the armor thing for that. Here we have another enchantment. Enchantment. Enchantment Enhancement Chips, the arm chip. This one, it says it increases your attacking abilities. I'm pretty sure it doesn't actually increase your raw damage. It, um, kind of like how I think it was an X2, the armor gave you the one where you get hit, it builds up the meter, and then you can release it as a big blast. This one, when you take the damage, it'll build up the hypercharge, which is like another weapon. When you switch to that, when it's fully charged, you can use it, and... It pretty much just has fully charged shots, so you can fire off your your, your big blasts uh, a couple times in a row without having to actually charge up. Um, I only have like one use for it, and that's only like at the end. So we're just gonna bypass that one. I'm not gonna get that one either. I don't really care for it too much. I don't really have much of a use for it. Unless there's more that it does that I don't know of, and that's gonna freaking hurt. Oh, I dodged it. Should have gotten wrecked there. That would have hurt for quite a bit of damage. And we are at the boss. Now let's see. Do I charge up for this guy? We'll start off with a charge up shot, I think. Um, this one's going to be one where I just uh, rapid fire him to death, I'm pretty sure. But 
gonna start off with this. Uh, oh, he's going crazy already. Gonna throw out a couple of electric balls. See there, I like to use the uh, I like to use the little hang time. I don't, I don't need to. I just like to. Uh, except for when it gets me hit there. Yep, that went well. I figured this was gonna be one where I was probably gonna get hit, but whatever. Whenever he throws the one up, that it becomes a real problem for me. It's when I have the two bouncing around, I usually get hit by one or the other. Now his desperation thing here, pretty pathetic, because that up there, I ha I am in no danger of coming in contact with that, provided I don't screw around. Especially with the air dash available to me. Maybe if I didn't have the air dash, I could see how you'd have to be a little careful. But with the air dash, I don't have to. Uh, I'm not mega jumping into it. And one more volley. And he's dead. Because even the, the like, all the particles and all that crap that kicks up when it sucks it in, you'd think that maybe you'd clip that and get hurt. If you did, that would actually make it quite the problem. But because it doesn't even affect you, that, that, you just, when he does that, he actually makes the fight easier. Because he's not throwing out all that electric crap in my way. So, he's, he's fairly easy. I guess maybe if you have the boots. And for him, we get a, a very useless weapon, I feel. I, I know it can affect a couple of regular enemies, but eh, this I, I don't care to use this stupid thing at all. You got the gravity well, which I even the charger version I don't really care to use. I'd rather have black hole bomb. Alright, anyways, get a password. And next up on our list is Toxic Seahorse. Now this stage has some pretty kick-ass music too, I definitely like this track as well. But what I don't like are these guys. These guys are kind of a pain to deal with. Maybe not right here, but when they show up again later on, I just don't like dealing with them, so I'm going to bypass them for now. Um, for this stage, I think they could have done maybe a little more with it, especially to fit with the theme of Toxic Seahorse. Because this Toxic stuff here, it doesn't affect me at all, it doesn't damage me or anything. So maybe what they could have done is, rather than damaging me directly or immediately, what it could do is, as you're standing in it for too long, it starts to hurt you, which would force you to kind of keep moving around, keep you, uh, keep you on your toes. I don't know, maybe, uh, make this segment more interesting, but whatever. And then again, maybe, uh, maybe this toxic stuff doesn't affect you because, I mean, you're supposed to be this, you know, super fighting robot, uh, Mega Man, um, in the future. So maybe this toxic stuff doesn't affect you. But I mean, hey, you know, who knows? Because if it some measly spikes can kill him when, when he takes a full-on blast from all these weapons and stuff and it doesn't, who knows? Because seriously, it's kind of silly when you think about it. He's just going along and he just falls onto this pointy object and all of a sudden he's dead. He just explodes. It doesn't really make sense when you think about it. And oh, we actually have Bite now. Nice to meet you, blah blah blah, you're going to be dead soon. He's also been programmed to exterminate me. Man, a few words. Now this fight is a little annoying. I got a pretty good stage to do it on. This one has enough room for me to work with here. Because you can't necessarily see it, but he's got this kind of like gravity thing he does. After he's throwing the mine, he starts to attract you towards him. And so that makes it really hard to dodge sometimes. Um, so that's why I have to try to time my jumps up off the wall so that I don't get really affected by it. He can't... Uh, can't get me because if he, he if he if I touch him he's gonna start doing this melee like hundred hand slap crap on me and it hurts like hell so whoa you saw my jump got a little messed up there because he was pulling me in gotta try to time my jump better in this fight I definitely use charge ups and oh I got lucky there you see how it pulled me off the wall and this timing a little bit did not mean to fire both off but I'll take it. Uh, I'm gonna let my charger get back and get back in position. Get back up, back up, back up. Get my charger back, get back in position. There we go. I gotta make sure I pay attention to his health. I don't want to kill him without his special weapon. I want to make sure I eliminate both of them. So now, I'm gonna switch to Ray Splasher. 
That's why this order also works out pretty well, because I will guaranteed have the weapons I need to for whenever they show up, even if they show up really early. Um, so I already had the Frost Shield by the time Bit can even possibly spawn. And then I get the Neon Tiger's weapon right after or whatever, so I'll have that for when Bite does eventually show up. So now that Bite is dead, both Bit and Bite are dead, which means I won't encounter them later on um, in the Fortress uh, stages, whatever. Um, if you leave one alive, they'll do this combine. If you leave both alive, they're supposed to combine to make this other bigger thing that you have to fight. Um, but even if one survives, it'll combine with nothing into the same thing. So the only way to stop that is to actually kill both with the proper weapons. By doing so, when we get to that point in the game, it's going to have a completely different boss instead. And I don't really care necessarily which one I fight, but I figured oh, I might as well just uh, kill them off. Plus I get to fight them with my buster and then I can just finish them off with the weapon. Anyways, for this segment here, um, normally I would be shooting at these things, but I'm not going to because it's just going to make my life a hell of a lot easier. Um, we'll see in a sec. You need the frog here, though, because you need it to use the homing missiles to blow up those. Because that keeps pushing you back. You can't make it up here without, the, uh, without destroying that first. And up here, we have another enhancement ship capsule. This one here is for the legs, I believe. Yes. This one's a fairly simple one. It just makes it so that you can uh, air dash twice. Uh, it's simple but effective. Um, you can air dash twice. You can do an oh sorry. You can do an air dash and then you can do a straight up dash, or you can do two air dashes straight up. Um, the other nice thing is you can actually do a mega jump and then still have an air dash. It's it's pretty nice. It makes it so you can kind of move around uh, a lot easier for especially for certain boss fights. It's pretty handy to have. But I will be passing up on this one as well. Just again, want to show that one off. And this is why I didn't want to kill those guys, because just like in Bubble Crab stage, uh, Mega Man X2, I can jump up on the water here. If I killed them, their shells, their spike shells would be up here, and I had to jump over them. It's not hard or anything, it's just why make it harder than it needs to be. Up here, we have another of the armor things. I believe this is the Kangaroo, okay, for Kangaroo. Though, honestly, that one doesn't really hop or anything. I don't, know, I don't know why they named it that way. At least I'm pretty sure that's what I read up on, that it was kangaroo. Anyways, I just kill him for the hell of it. Uh, here, oh, we're gonna have a regular mini boss here. I'm actually going to use a special weapon for him. I like to use the race splasher for him, just makes it more convenient. And almost got hit there. Definitely got hit there, because I'm stupid and tried to slide under. That's not jumping. Come on. There we go. I don't know if it was me or if I was crazy or whatnot, but it just sometimes felt like when I was practicing this, my jumps just weren't going off, even when I wasn't doing the charge up or anything. I don't know. Anyways, that's dead. Nope, oh, give me energy. And oh, we should be out of the water segment now. Funny enough, you don't fight this boss underwater, even though he's kind of well, he has like a partial water stage. I don't know. I don't know why I decided to take that to the face, but I did. There we go. Probably should have used a special weapon for him, but whatever. I'm going to mash the button until I get mine. Almost got hit there, almost got shot point blank. Almost did what I normally do. Normally I hop down, I start moving left, and I fall right onto the spikes. I barely remembered in time for this one, though. I did that so many times in practice, it was really dumb. I probably did that like five out of the seven times. Uh, let's see, I am not going to do any charging up for this guy. This is another one where I'm just going to rapid fire him to death. Um, he's not too bad, it's a little annoying when he goes into his desperation crap, just because it, it can take a while. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to keep mashing, I'm going to try not to, uh, jump up on the wall or anything to dodge that. I'm going to try to shoot my way through it. See if I can do that. I don't know if I stay in the right position. Uh, it's a little close. Sometimes if he's really close, you have just the bare minimum amount of time to do so. Oh, there he goes. Now he's going to disappear down there. 
reappear. I am gonna try to get a charge off. You gotta time it just right. It's kind of a pain, and he hits me. Now he's gonna launch off these bouncing ones. They're they're kind of annoying. They really won't let me get down there. So I kind of just wait for him to teleport away. Time this. I didn't delay it enough. And see, he hits me in the face with it. Sometimes he also hops around more than usual. It kind of makes it a pain. You can't really hide up on the wall entirely then. That. You're, you suck. God. Oh, okay, this is just going to be a fight where I take a lot of damage. Whatever. Don't really know why I'm charging up here. Oh, come on. That didn't get him at all. Suck. Totally, totally, totally botched that one. Now, you know what? You're dead. Kind of sloppy, but you get the idea. Much easier with the weapon, obviously. Because with the weapon, you can just get him stuck in this loop, and he's just, he's totally screwed. But we'll do that to him later. <laughs> like I said, we use the buster on all of them, just so you can kind of see the patterns. Plus, it's good practice. I don't think I've ever practiced this much for a Mega Man X game. Really taking the time to really learn the patterns well, or as well as I can, anyways. Um, this weapon's okay. Um, there's a fair amount of damage, depending on how you use it. Uh, the way it, it fires can be useful. That splash there actually can do damage, too, so it's, it's okay. Acid Burst is one that I'll use a couple of times, most likely. Get another password. And we have six down, two to go. So in the next video, we will start off with Volt Catfish. So I'm going to cut this one here, so I'll see you guys then.